Here we have the Car Advice 79 series in its natural habitat. A little bit better than being in the office. Well, it's more fun anyway. In fact, you can almost hear it screaming when it's parked in the garage at North Sydney. Let me out, please let me out, let me go bush. And that's where we are today. Believe it or not, we've already done 15,000 Ks in it, a lot of it off-road. So what we're gonna to do today is have a look at some of the modifications we've made and how we feel about them after 15,000 Ks. Okay, so starting up the front, we've got the worn winch. We haven't even had to use that yet. It's still in, inverted commas, as new condition. This front bar's fantastic. The approach angle is great when you're off-road. It's got properly rated recovery under there, and that's what you want. Here, for me, are the two biggest changes we've made that have made the most significant difference off-road. Tires and suspension. Now, the ARB suspension's given us about 50 millimetres extra clearance, give or take, front to rear. Um, and obviously makes a huge difference because clearance is just about everything off-road and one of the first things that stops you from progressing forward is when you start dragging things and getting stuck. Uh, it's a little on the firm side on road when you've got nothing in it but then you can load the canopy up as we've done off-road before and on touring trips and it deals with that really nicely and to be completely honest with you I probably think this suspension is actually better than the standard suspension that was in it on road without any weight in the 79, so that's saying something as well because it means your money was well worth spending. Now, these new BF Goodridge Mud Terrain tyres, that's the next change, and I reckon just in terms of what you notice off-road, this is the most significant difference. These things are incredible. They flick mud and sand out of the way. We've been in pretty soft, wet mud and sand today, and you can see there's hardly any you know, build-up in there. They're nice and clean. They get rid of that stuff. They've always got grip. The other thing that they love is being aired up or aired down. So you can mess around with the tyre pressures depending on what you're doing. If you've got a heap of weight in the back, you could air them right up. We tend to run them at the recommended tyre pressure for the stock tyres, the all-terrains that these have on them standard, or a PSI or two above that when we're on the road. Off-road, you can air them right down, sand, mud, water, nothing bothers them. And the other thing that's worth mentioning, because everybody seems to drive around on these on the road, is they're not that noisy. At 110 on the freeway, even at 100 on coarse chip, they don't actually make that much noise. And we've got 15,000 Ks on them now. Uh, so they're really impressive in that regard. And regardless of how much off-roading you do, you've got to do a hell of a lot of driving on sealed stuff to get there in the first place, unless you live in the bush. If you move along to these clear view mirrors, these are also awesome. You see a lot of 70 series with them on, good reason for it. You've got two mirrors, close up, further away, you can move them around. These are just the basic mechanical ones, they're not electric, but they make a huge difference as well, especially when you're manoeuvring around. We've towed with them, and the best part about that is they're also extendable, so you can move them out if you need to. However, you can see well past the box, even when they're in the retracted position. The other change that is small and not the most expensive thing in the world is these side steps. Now, you may think, why would you get rid of the factory side steps? Well, they're rubbish. They belong in a recycling bin somewhere. They're absolutely useless. These ARB ones, that bolt right through in underneath the gearbox, they're excellent. They're not about protection so much, but they come further away from the vehicle so they're easier to step in and out of. And when they're wet and covered in mud, they're not slippery either, so that's fantastic. The other big change, obviously, the expensive change, is the box on the back. That's the next thing we'll have a look at. So this is the side of the canopy where most of the action happens. First up, Red Arc power management. Well, because everybody does. LED lighting's great. You might be wondering why we went with a Norweld canopy. We've probably already said this, but we reckon it's the best and it's very easy to just go for the best when car advice is spending the money, not you, because these things are expensive, but there's good reason. Australian made, Australian product, and it's really, really good. This is my Engel 80 litre fridge freezer. It's mounted to a clear view fridge slide, which is the one that Norweld uses. Same brand as our mirrors. It's excellent because it slides out. It also drops down. As I said, this is my personal angle. The reason we went with an 80 litre is because we've got the room to do it. Norwell told us it would fit. It does, there's about that much clearance at the top, probably about 10 mil at the top, which is perfect. And the bigger the fridge freezer that you can carry, the longer you can spend off-road and carry enough supplies. I've had a National Luna before, South African brand, probably 10 to 12 years I had that one. I went to an angle just because, you know, I'd heard so many good things about them. Sam Purcell, our off-road guru, he has had Waco and ARB fridges. He's currently running an angle upright. We just think they're really good, they're tough, durable. You never seem to hear any horror stories about them, 
and this one's been really good to me. The storage in here is fantastic. So this shelf up here, got a couple of camp chairs up there. You'll notice it's not full of gear, good reason for that. We don't drive this around day to day with four or 500 kilos of stuff in it because you don't need it. So when we go out back, when we go bush, we load it up, we take that gear that we need. Extra storage for your cooking and basic camp supplies there. That drawers fantastic, pots, pans, plates. There's also a preparation bench there. This side uh, of the canopy is the side that you live out. Sam and the boys found that when they went camping, went off road, this is the side that you live out of. It's really flexible. The best part about it is you put your stuff in there and it stays exactly where you want it to. Now, if you watch the first couple of updates on our 79, you'll notice that these locks are different and Norweld have updated their locks. They've been working on these for quite a while. They've obviously got a slightly different handle design which we're finding to be really good. But the other thing that we like about them is there's a second lock system. You can pull these little ribs out of here and run another lock through it. So you can double lock it, key up here, padlock down there if you want to. Okay, so over to the other side of the canopy now. And again, this one's more about storage really, and we don't tend to use this as much day to day as we use the other side. LED lighting, red arc power inverter, deep cycle battery, securely mounted inside a box there. We've had to change that once. We had some issues with the deep cycle. Now we've got a good one in there, no problem at all. Couple of little things here. As I said, you'll see there's not much gear in here. This is our Bush Ranger compressor. Um, we've got a couple of these at Car Advice. We bought these, we did a whole bunch of research, tested a whole bunch of them, decided to go with these. We bought two of these for our kit. This one lives in here. Another product that we personally recommend is this Grab Me gear here. These are clear top canvas bags. What you can see in this one is a couple of our big ratchet straps that we just carry in case of emergencies. And it's a WA company, really good quality product. So once again, put our own money on the line and bought those ones. You got some good tie down straps, plenty of storage. And the best part is you put it in here, it doesn't move around. You don't have to worry it flying around the cabin of the interior. Now, what we should also mention here, something we shouldn't forget, are the other boxes at the back, the, the rear of the canopy, if you will. These on either side, these are handy. On this side, we put recovery gear, your basic recovery stuff. We tend to leave that in there. On the other side, we have the tow bar so that that's not hanging off the back of the vehicle when you don't need it. We only put that on when we're towing. It's otherwise safely stored over there. Again, they're locked up. These things here, spare tires. It's good to have two of them, first of all, rather than one, especially if you're out in the bush and you're remote. But the other thing is, if you've ever had to change a tire, as we've done many times in the mud, the dirt, the sand, it's wet, it's much, much easier lifting a tire off there than it is crawling around underneath the tray, trying to release it from where it would normally be mounted. So having two up here, huge bonus. So there you have it, 15,000 kilometers down in the Toyota four-wheel drive that everybody wants to own. And that's clear every time we're out on the road in this thing, someone stops us to have a chat. This is no longer a beater's old farm truck with a really good engine. We've turned this into a really capable touring four-wheel drive. Well, that's the current state of play of the Car Advice 79 series. Let us know in the comments section below if you've got a project four-wheel drive that you're working on, because we love to hear what you guys and girls are up to. Tell us what stage of the build you're at. Show us the photos even. If you're halfway through the build, tell us what you've still got left to do. We love to know what you guys are building, what you've got in the works, and where you plan on taking your four-wheel drive when you finish the modifications. There's absolutely no doubt, though, that the 79 series is one of the most popular four-wheel drives on the road.